is happening guys, my name is Jamie. Today we are doing a live album review for the band Iron Maiden, one of my favourite bands of all time, Knights of the Dead, an album they just released uh, on November 20th. Iron Maiden has released a lot of live albums over the past. I think Live After Death is probably one of my favourite Iron Maiden live albums. Absolutely adore that one. And you know what? I was pretty excited, pretty excited for a new Iron Maiden live album to drop, Knights of the Dead. So this was recorded last year on the Leg Legacy of the Beast tour in Mexico, in Mexico City. I don't know how short this video will be, but I'm gonna say it's gonna be a pretty short video because I'm gonna give you my honest opinion on what I thought about this album. It was quite an enjoyable concert, it really was. So we all have to know, we all have to understand that Bruce Dickinson's vocals aren't as great as they used to be. The main problem with this album is overall Bruce's vocals. His vocals are quite tired at times. He and he strains at times, especially when he gets to those high notes. But that's all right. He's 62 fucking years old or something like that. So excuse me if Bruce Dickinson doesn't sound like he sounded like 20 years ago because he also experienced cancer. He is getting older now. So age 60 or whatever he is now, he actually sounds quite good on this. He fucking sounds quite good on this. I'm going to say his voice is okay on this. He, str he struggles getting to those high notes. The overall production is actually one of the crispiest Productions of a live made an album in my opinion. It's very crisp. You can really hear Nico's drumming on this album like it's really prominent It's really prominent. You can hear every single snares hit you can hear every single drum fill he delivers and Yannick Adrian Smith Dave Murray's guitar is very prominent throughout the mix Steve Harris's bass of course is quite prominent as well. So I do love the overall mix on this it's very crisp, it really is, which creates this atmosphere. Because as I was listening to this album, I was closing my eyes and pretending they were on stage and the actual atmospheric tones, frequencies, actually felt like I was there. I don't know how they did it, but I absolutely adored the production on this album. I think it's fantastic. So there are 17 tracks on this live album with two discs. So there are nine tracks on the first disc and eight tracks on the second disc. So it kicks off with Ace's High. Ace's High is pretty good. Um, Bruce's vocals are a little bit worn out on this song, but you can imagine that he is running up and down, puffing at times. But man, if you see him live and everything, he's probably just running up the stage like a mad man. So excuse me if he's out of breath at times. But yeah, he sounds pretty good on this. Wet Eagle's There, really good as well. One of my favorite songs by Iron Maiden. Just really enjoy it. I just love how prominent and uh, Steve Harris basses throughout this song and Bruce sounds really good. Two minutes to midnight, two minutes to midnight, Bruce sort of struggles throughout the chorus because the crowd really lift, really lift him. And I just love how energetic Iron Maiden sounds on this. Your Klansman, which is absolutely awesome. The crowd chants freedom. And yeah, my Maiden sound absolutely fantastic on this. The Trooper, yeah, Bruce sounds really good on the Trooper. Really adore his vocals on it. And overall, it's pretty fun. Really love the solos by Adrian Smith, Dave Murray, Yannick. They really, really work well together on this. Revelations. Yeah, Bruce is really good on this song as well. Love his dynamic vocals at times. Yeah, it's a pretty solid song. Then you got For the Greater Good of God. Beautiful song, really beautiful. I love how long it is, it's quite epic. I do love the symphonic elements that are building throughout this live version. Instrumentals on point, it's one of the best songs of the album. And yeah, Bruce sounds really good on this. Uh, the Wicker Man, very good song as well. Your time will come. Yeah, he sounds pretty good and so does the crowd. The crowd really lift up the atmosphere, really lift up the album itself. So then we get to Sign of the Cross. Yeah, Bruce sounds really good on this as well. Really love Bruce's low range. Does sound like Blaze Bailey at times. You swear it sounds like Blaze Bailey throughout this song, to be honest. Although I do love his high dynamic vocals on the chorus. The Sign of the Cross, so damn good. What's a great proggy song. Flight of Icarus. Bruce is sort of struggling throughout this song, you could say. But damn, he still sounds great as well. 
Fear of the Dark, love Bruce's vocals on this. Fear of the Dark, he sounds probably the best off the album. It's the number of the beast. Number of the beast, really surprised how he got to that high scream. Really am surprised. He really blew me away with that. I really enjoyed the vocals on this uh, on this song. And Number of the Beast is a fucking banger. And the last song, which is Iron Maiden, before the encore, yeah, great song. Bruce sounds really good. And then you got the Evil That Men Do, which is the encore. Fantastic fucking banger. It's got the, all the classics on this album. You got Hallowed Be Thy Name. Yeah, Bruce sounds fantastic as well on this. And Run To The Hills, the worst, the worst song off the album. It is, you know why? Because it's the worst song off the album? It's because of those fucking backup vocals. Those backup vocals are fucking atrocious. They really are. And that's probably one of my pet hates off this album. The, the backup vocals especially on Run To The Hills, are so damn prominent. Bruce sounds fucking fantastic on this song, really does. But the backup vocals, who were, who was singing? Who was singing? Who was singing? Because those vocals were fucking atrocious on Run To The Hills. They really were. Overall, it's, um, overall Run To The Hills um, is a letdown because of those backup vocals. And that's what really pissed me off. I Am Made A Knights of the Dead was a pretty solid live album. I thoroughly enjoyed it. I love how fun it was. This was a very fun Iron Maiden album, just like Iron Maiden and a pretty fucking fun band. Love the solos, they were on point. Fear of the Dark seemed like a little bit fast tempo to me, a little bit more than the actual studio version, but as uh, Nico incorporated more drum fills throughout that song to really increase the, increase the speed of the chorus, in my opinion. But overall, it was a pretty solid album. Even though Bruce sounded at times quite tired, his vocals were okay. So um, for Iron Maiden, Night of the Dead, although his vocals are at times a little bit straining, but he's he's like he's he's sixty something. He's sixty two now. I mean, what do you fucking expect? People are shitting on his vocals as well. I've noticed. You sing, you sing as good as he is singing at sixty two. You cunts. Anyway, that's it for the I Am Maiden Knights of the Dead live in Mexico album review. I hope you did enjoy it. So how am I going to score this? I've never scored a live album actually, so this is going to be interesting. Um, I think we're going to do something different. We're not going to do it out of 10. We're going to do it with star. We're going to do it with out of 5 for live albums. Yeah, I just changed it. How's that? So for I Made a Night of the Dead, I'll probably give this three and a half stars. And that is a wrap. So guys, comment below what you thought about this I Am Maiden live album. Do you agree or disagree with my opinion? Um, let me know if you heard this album as well. What do you think about Bruce's vocals? la di yada yada So really, I want some conversation going. So keep the discussion going in the comment section below. And I will see you in the next one.